Cravings, we could, we could kind of loosely label it as a feeling. And what you don't want to do is stifle or mute or avoid feelings. It's like trying to stifle anger or sadness or any other feeling. What you want to do is master the actions. Because if you stifle a feeling or you run away from a feeling, that's what pushes you towards these types of habits. If I'm afraid of feeling cravings, I'm going to avoid the feeling of craving as much as possible. It's going to lead me to feeding myself every time I have a damn craving or replacing it with some other addictive you know, tool or, 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 or thing, right? So I can have the feeling. It's okay to feel the craving, the feeling of craving. It's the action that I master. A grown man can't go around punching holes in the wall and hitting people. Right. So you have to learn to master your actions. But the anger, the feeling's still there. And it actually, loose, it actually loses some of its potency because the action doesn't have to follow. Oh, it's a big giveaway today. The MAPS Super Bundle. This is the biggest bundle that we offer. One of you will get it for free. Here's what's included, by the way. MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, MAPS Aesthetic, MAPS Prime, MAPS Anywhere. Okay, All included in this bundle. One of you will get it for free. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel. Turn on your notifications. If you do all those things and we like your comment, we'll notify you and you'll get free access to the MAPS Super Bundle. Also, we got a sale going on right now. It's the April Bundle Sale. MAPS Prime, MAPS Prime Pro, MAPS Anywhere. If you got all three at retail, it would cost you $361. But right now, it's only $99.99. And again, it's only this month. So if you're interested, head over to mapsapril.com. All right, here comes the rest of the show. What's one of the hardest things uh, that you guys think your clients tell you when it comes to diet, nutrition, you know, why they, why it's so hard for them to eat in a particular way? What's the, the one thing that comes up? The, their addiction to food. Yeah. You know? mm. yeah. Cravings. Yeah. yeah. The word cravings, right? That Giving up, up certain types of foods. Yeah. A lot of times. Right? Yeah. It's really tough. And when I first became a trainer, I'd love your guys' opinion on this too, since you guys are also fitness fanatics. I remember thinking totally wrong about this because I was a fitness fanatic. I used to think, well, just, just do it. You know, I can do it. Why can't you do it? Yeah. You know? Um, and that's because I was so obsessed and passionate about fitness that I assumed everybody was a fanatic as well. And it, it prevented me from really figuring this out for, to, to be able to help other people. Cause I thought it was just a matter of willpower. Mm -hmm. But later on, I learned that there's so much more to food than just being robotic about it, you know, and, and avoiding some foods and eating other foods. There's so much more to it. Yeah. And if we don't talk about that, people are going to get stuck in this, you know, this, uh, this self-defeating hamster wheel of, you know, of, you know, away, away from the cravings. Oh no, the cravings take over and I give up and then I'm back on the track again. And then it's just like this circular. Yeah. It's not the whole story. No. And I think, yeah, we were young and thought for sure it was that simple. It was, um, you know, it's just math. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's where it's like the whole thing with the calories in and out. And it's like, it's so simple. You guys, like you just got to cut this out and then life's going to move on. Everything's gonna be great. Yeah. But there's just so many other factors, uh, to what's going on in like so many associations, emotional ties, um, you know, connections with people and, uh, food plays a vital role in our everyday lives. Yeah. Well, I used to think that hunger and cravings were the same thing. Yeah. That's I used, very good. I, I really I just thought it was like, you know, if I was craving food, oh, I must be hungry. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, I've got to be hungry right now. And my body's telling me I need to eat. And it really was for me, it was a long time before this really kind of came full circle or my paradigm was shattered. And that was the introduction to fasting mm -hmm. and, and starting to read like all the research around that. And that, you know, I always thought like, oh, one, uh, hunger and cravings are the same thing. Two, if I didn't eat a certain amount of time, muscle was going to fall off my body. And so the whole concept around fasting and refraining from food completely like shattered my paradigm. So good. In fact, I think it's very important to label what you're feeling properly. You know, language shapes how we feel about certain things. I'll give you an example. I was watching this talk. I think it was Brene Brown. She was talking on uh, Netflix. Uh, I think it's Netflix or oh, no, HBO Max. And she's she, she's uh, an speaker. expert on this. Yeah. And she talks about language shapes our feelings. And here's one example. If we were to measure physiological responses to anxiety and compare it to the physiological responses to uh, to excitement, they're almost identical. Mm -hmm. The difference is the perception. I'm I'm anxious versus I'm excited. And one feels fun. 
The other one feels totally terrible, right? So craving and hunger are two completely different things. Hunger is a signal that happens when you lack nutrients, you lack calories. You actually need those things. Cravings are an uncomfortable feeling that happens that usually comes from feelings that you maybe want to avoid uh, or maybe want to feed, uh, no pun intended. So it's two completely different things. And that's a good like place to start is to say, am I hungry or is this just a craving? Because hunger, you need to answer. Craving is totally different. Well, do you, I mean, where do you stand now? Do you, do you believe that anybody who lives in the United States ever is truly hungry? No, I no mean, most now, people aren't. Like th that, that's what kind of really shattered my paradigm uh -huh. was that it's like, you know, not only am I not hungry, but I, I could probably make the case that very few, if any, people in the United States have ever truly experienced what true hunger feels like. And 99.9% .9 of all the things that we feel with our attraction towards food has everything to do with cravings. Yes. Well, this is why I got so attracted to the idea of fasting when I first went through it, because it was just so eye-opening to me. It was like I didn't really stay in that feeling for that long before of you know, not having access to food and just what my body was, was going through and what I really needed versus... Um, you know, what my, my cravings were leading me towards. And um, it, again, it's just like that self-reflection, that introspection that you can, can sit through that. It's really difficult for people to do that. And a lot of clients come in and have like never even done that. So that was eye opening for me. Totally. Well, even when your, your body uh, burns off the fuel that you say you consumed earlier in that day, or even the day before, and say so you tap out all that, like this idea that you now have no no more fuel and the body is now going to start to break down muscle and you're going to lose that is so not true. And I think, Sal, you've shared this before. I don't know if you know the number off your top of your head, but how many calories in reserve does your body? Like oh, my God. Well, in, in, in carbohydrates alone, I believe it's something like 7,000 or so, mm -hmm. um, most of it being stored in the liver and some in the muscle. And then our fat stores, uh, the average, even a lean, ripped athlete, has got something to the tune of 50,000 calories stored uh, in body fat. Wow. And hunger, real hunger doesn't kick in for a long time. So if you miss lunch, it's not hunger that kicks in. If you miss breakfast, it's not hunger that kicks in. It's usually when you don't eat for two or three days, which back to your point, Adam, most people living in modern societies have never gone. Yeah. You know, one day it takes a food. lot of discipline to do that. Yes, it, totally. Yeah. So here's an example of a craving. Um, I just ate a big dinner. I'm full. Oh my God. I'm totally full. Oh my God. They're bringing out the dessert. <laughs> yeah. I really want that. That's not hunger. Right. That's craving. And I'm using the extreme example to illustrate the point here, but it's very important that you label what you have as a craving or hunger because then you can address it and kind of figure out what's going on. I, I mentioned earlier that cravings are, are triggered by feelings. The most common one for me, and I'll speak personally, is boredom. If I'm bored, yeah. I tend to want to eat. So if I'm at home, nothing going on, uh, I'll open the pantry. What do we got? Let me see if there's any snacks or whatever. Uh, if I go to my parents' house uh, or my grandparents' house, for some reason that triggers cravings for me, probably because they always feed me when I go there. So I'll open the cupboards and see what's going on. But other common ones are sadness, because if you feel sad... Nobody wants to sit in the feeling of sadness, uh, just like I don't like to sit in the feeling of boredom. Yeah. So what they'll do is they'll distract themselves by eating, and eating is pleasurable. This is why the foods that you crave tend to be pleasurable foods. We almost don't, we almost never crave foods that are, I don't know, for lack of a better term, in the healthy category. It's like you don't, cra I don't crave, you know, broccoli or vegetables or you know a whole natural food. It's usually something that's hyper palatable. And that's because it's a very, very good distraction. Sadness is a common one. Anxiety or stress are another one. People tend to eat with stress or anxiety. Um, there's a lot of different feelings that we want to run away from or avoid or feed through eating. And that is what fuels these cravings. Well, it's a, it's, it's a form of uh, medicating yourself. The yeah. same way that a alcohol or alcoholic uses alcohol or somebody who abuses drugs uses totally. a form of drugs. And you mentioned um, that, addiction to food. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's and I think we're heading down the same path. That's where I think most of our clients, where they struggle with, and the, the root cause is not anything really to do with the food. There's something else that's underlining. And I think that was again, something that took a long time as a trainer for me to learn how to unpack that and, and help my client 
figure out like this isn't a a macro calories in calories out issue right now there's something underlining that you are either running from or you want to avoid or that you want to keep yourself busy yeah. and the what you're choosing is food as your way to keep yourself busy yeah. what do you guys' mm -hmm. triggers when it comes to cravings for me it's boredom that's like the biggest one if i had nothing to do that's when boredom's I the same thing for, for me I, I sleep for me uh, for sure oh, oh that yeah. kicks up big time when yeah, I, I yeah i start craving all kinds of junk uh, when you're tired when i'm really tired yeah, yeah it's like tired. you want that serotonin right and that yeah, dopamine something that you're to spike lacking. me up but then it's never a good choice the, yeah the other one is you know and i don't know where you would how you would categorize this but even just um habits right so i think i've talked about this on the show before where um when i was competing i had to eat so many calories and i trained myself to eat so frequently and mm. such massive meals that even to this day, and I, it wasn't that long ago that I hadn't broken the habit of if I ordered five guys, it would be two of these double oh, cheese. Yeah. And back when I had to eat 5,000 calories, I needed that. I would power right through that in order for me to maintain, but I'm nowhere near that. Oh, but I still, I still have this habit of mm. I trained myself for so many years consistently. Mm. If I ordered this meal, it was this big. And it's like, I, I don't even really want that, but I think I do. Here's another one with habits. It's uh, lunchtime. Oh, right. I got a craving for right. food or, oh, I wake up, I have a craving for food or it's dinner time. I have a craving for food. It's funny, right? People, I used to get, I used to think that I was hungry and if I missed lunch, I would get irritable. Mm -hmm. The reality is, is I was not feeding my craving or satisfying the craving. And what made me irritable was the uncomfortable feeling. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't that I was hungry. It you was you allowed yourself to be in that state of mind. Yes. You, you, you associated that so strongly that you, you just decided this is how I'm going to behave well, now. We've even given it labels to justify it. You hear people, I'm hangry. Yeah. I'm yeah. hangry. It's exactly. like to justify that you are uncomfortable in yeah. that situation. <laughs> or people, well, you're I, just being a dick. Or, yeah. Yeah, or what about low blood sugar? Oh, my blood sugar goes down. Yeah, yeah. You, Unless you're diabetic. They, they, you that doesn't that. happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's not true. Right. You're right. Unless you're diabetic. You know, yeah. it, this is what's, here's, this is an important fact here or, or something to take note of. Cravings, we could we could kind of loosely label it as a feeling. And what you don't want to do is stifle or mute or avoid feelings. It's like trying to stifle anger or sadness or any other feeling. What you want to do is master the actions. Because if you stifle a feeling or you run away from a feeling, that's what pushes you towards these types of habits. If I'm afraid of feeling cravings, I'm going to avoid the feeling of craving as much as possible. It's going to lead me to feeding myself every time I have a damn craving or replacing it with some other addictive, you know, tool or, 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 or thing. Right. So I can have the feeling it's okay to feel the craving, the feeling of craving. It's the action that I master. And it just like anger. Like, I'll tell you what, as a man, I, and a lot of men can relate to this. You, you're, when you're a boy, your testosterone levels are, are nothing. You don't have high testosterone at all. All of a sudden you go through puberty and you have all these feelings, okay? One of them being anger. I remember as a young kid, you know, young boys can be angry too. But man, when you're a teenage boy and your testosterone goes from zero to the highest it's ever going to be, mm -hmm. all of a sudden you feel this crazy, over, this overwhelming emotion. And you have to learn to master your actions. A grown man can't go around punching holes in the wall and hitting people. Right. So you have to learn to master your actions. But the anger, the feeling's still there. And it actually loses it actually loses some of its potency because the action doesn't have to follow. What right? you're talking about is the main thing that I believe all three of us would agree is the real true value of fasting. Yeah. Is learning how to control mm -hmm. those impulses, those actions. To be with them. through Yes, to, to sit in them, to be disciplined. I've already committed. I'm not eating all day long today. And now I've got all these feelings and emotions yep. and you got to sit in them. I've already committed. I'm not going yes. to give in. I'm going to do that. And you're you're training it like a muscle. The same yep. way that you, you go to the gym and you lift weights to get stronger, right? The same thing that you're doing with your discipline here and your relationship with food. That's where the real value of fasting. Now, the way it's marketed to everybody is fat loss and reduction of calories yeah. and mental clarity and then the growth hormone production. I mean, they, they've they attached all kinds of great science. Which, by the way, all those things are are attached to lower calorie diets, yeah. regardless right. if you fast or not. Right. And this <laughs> is this is where I agree with Lane, because Lane loves to pick apart shit like this and be like, listen, it's the same thing if you're just yeah. in a low calorie diet. But from day one, we've never presented that to our audience as the real value in it. Right. Yeah. This is the real value. You're training something where people have a really hard time controlling. It's and it's muscle. really your relationship with food that we're trying to improve by detaching from it and sitting in those feelings. Totally. You, can, you can always act or react 
and one is going to lead you, uh, you know, in, in a more negative path versus the other. Yeah. And so it's it's learning how to uh, make those decisions when you're in that really uncomfortable state. Yes, uh, it's proactive versus reactive. So when you train yourself to be reactive, it becomes a habit. Craving, satisfy the craving. Craving yes. is uncomfortable, got to go eat something. So what you have to do is you have to train a new feeling around it. You literally, and you you just mentioned this, Adam, change the relationship you have with the feeling of cravings, which then will result in impulsive actions being erased, or at the very least, you become aware of your impulsive actions. So you're no longer reactive. You're like, oh, there's that feeling again, but here's how I'm going to act versus there's that feeling, react, right? Yep. You Whatever you do a lot of, you end up training. This is, this is an important thing to understand. So if you are right now listening and cravings are really challenging to you, we're going to go through some steps on how you can retrain yourself. But just like any kind of training, it's going to take time. So nothing that we're going to say today in what we're talking about today is going to fix yes, or magical. solve this problem <laughs> You can start working on it, but it's yes. going to take a lot of discipline to really develop this. It's well, a practice. The, yeah, yes. the, and the first part or the first step to this practice is becoming aware. That's it. <laughs> is, is you got to first become aware before we work on or fix anything. Yes. One of the best ways to become aware of anything is to change how you think. What does that mean? Okay. What, people don't realize this, but writing is a form of thinking. And there's a lot of therapists and counselors and psychologists that encourage people to write their feelings down. Yep. And, you, and when I, was, I remember when I was younger and, and someone encouraged me to do that. now thought, it's real. Well, I just thought that was dumb. Like, oh, right. What's the difference? I think it, I write it. Very big difference because when you write things out, you think differently. You see what you wrote. It's an exercise. And it's an exercise. So one of my favorite awareness practices around cravings is identify that it's a craving versus hunger. I have that craving. Write down how you feel. How do I feel right now? How does the craving feel right now? What's going on? Now, this doesn't necessarily mean you don't have to react on the craving just yet. Remember, I said it's going to take some time. So at the very least, write down how you feel. And then if you're like, I'm not ready to not give into this craving, go ahead and give into the craving. But then write down, how did I feel during while I was eating this particular food? And how do I feel afterwards? And what this does is it brings, what you're doing is you're, and Arthur Brooks talks about this uh, a lot. In fact, our recent episode, he talks about this practice with other things. But what you're doing is you're moving these reactions from the reactive part of the brain to the prefrontal cortex, which is the essentially the part of the brain that makes us human. It's what makes us think logically and act in ways that are beneficial, not necessarily reactive. So when you're becoming aware, you're taking this reactive circle that's happening or cycle that's happening in other parts of your brain, you're moving it to the front side part of your brain, which then allows you to process it. Over time, this practice then moves that back to the reactive part of your brain. So then your reaction changes mm -hmm. from giving into the craving or avoiding the craving to un understanding it. And yeah. there's a feeling and it, I don't have to so react on it. First, it's a conscious thought, then it becomes a subconscious thought. It goes from conscious incompetence, from conscious incompetence to conscious competence to unconscious. It's competence. such it's such a powerful exercise for self awareness totally. because uh, the clients and the people that I've had do this it, they it, they always learn something about themselves. Isn't that weird? They'll come back to you and they'll say something like, "You know what, Adam? I had, I had no idea, but after consistently doing this, every time I go and reach for the chips or these snacks." Something happened earlier in my day totally. where either yeah. at work because I can't stand my boss and we had an interaction <laughs> or my husband who never picks up his stuff behind him when, when I in the morning time or they always find out that, holy shit, there's something else that's going on in my life that I'm kind of suppressing and then eating to medicate. And I don't even realize that I'm doing it because it's not like tragic, you know, like your husband leaving his underwear on the floor and not putting it in a hamper. It's not like the end of the world, but it's enough to bother you to inside be festering and be thinking about it. And then causes you to go do that, to try and get that, that dopamine hit that yeah. you want through those. I'll chips. never forget. I had a client who we went through this practice and she was very, she was like, okay, I'll, I'll give it a shot. And she realized something that blew her mind where she's like, I never realized I did this. This is how unaware I was. When I go to the grocery store, I snack on, you know how they have the bins where you could grab like the chocolates oh, or the right. candies or the nuts. She's like, I eat those things and I never track them. I never write them down. And I think I was purposely like unconscious freebies. about it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like she was purposely... Yeah, you know, like, like we want to be unconscious of some of these actions because they serve us in some way, right? They distract yeah. us. And she's like, as as soon as I started becoming aware, I started saying, wait a minute. I keep reaching in. Every time I walk by the bin with the chocolate-covered almonds or whatever, I grab a handful. 
she became aware of it and she realized that, oh, I have these feelings when I'm in the grocery store that I, I want to avoid. And so I reach in and I do it. Now I'm aware, wow, there's an extra 500 calories worth of you know chocolates or chocolate covered nuts that I end up eating. So becoming aware is very interesting. It's also uncomfortable. I want to warn people. Oh, okay? yeah. yeah. <laughs> when you do this, this again, I keep saying this is a practice. And uncover some time. shit you don't want to uncover. Yeah, it's, <laughs> that's it. Whatever feeling was uncomfortable that yeah. leads you to to have, to react to these cravings is now going to surface. Okay, so that means you're going to have to kind of deal with the feeling a little bit. So this is not a comfortable process. Just like the first time you work out and you start squatting, it's not a comfortable process. You suck at it. It's hard. You're shaky. Oh, I'm a little sore. Wow, whatever. There's some acceptance going on. I guess I'm not good at this exercise. But as you continue to practice, what ends up happening with your relationship with you know exercise? It still hurts, but now the hurt feels different, and I enjoy it, and I start to enjoy the process. So that's what's going to happen when you do this first step. So, sometimes the awareness too is just you 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 become aware of just habits that you've created too. It doesn't always have to be something. I, I brought up the thing with like the husband or this. It doesn't yeah. always have to be this like negative thing sure. either. It could just be a habit that you've created. I remember when I figured this out with why do I have this habit of if I have ice cream or candy or some sort of a dessert in my house that I have to crush the whole fucking bag. It was so weird to me. I remember that, you talking about that. Yeah, and it took a long time for me to figure out, you know what this is from? This goes all the way back from when I was a kid and I lived in a house with yeah, you know six people. Other kids. Yes, I was competing mm -hmm. with my siblings. It was very rare that we got these treats or desserts. Yeah, you didn't have house. a lot of money, so it's like we yeah, got one thing. So when we cream got cream. it, it was like you had to get it and you had to crush as much as you could <laughs> because you, you're not coming. No one gets seconds. So you want to get as much as you possibly can. And I had trained myself for so long to eat that way when it came to desserts and treats that even as an adult who can afford to have as many cans of candy and ice cream yeah. that he wants, I still would do this. And so I had to, I, and it was exercises like this that allowed me to kind of unpack and go, oh shit, like it's not, I can yeah, go have one. Yeah. I had a conversation with my kids about that because we rarely have dessert and we'd be out at a restaurant and you know, dessert would come and their spoons are ready to go. And they're trying, <laughs> they're trying to like get their steak as much as possible. Yeah, Cause we don't know when dad's going to listen. Not even it. caring about like what it tastes like, it's just <laughs> how much they can get in before, you know, cause we would always share it. Cause it was like one of those things. Cause this, the portions are ridiculous, right? Yeah. Especially for kids. And so we just, we've had multiple conversations about this, about actually tasting it, taking a few minutes in between to breathe. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm not going to jump back in and this isn't a competitive thing. This yeah. is like an enjoyment. It's a treat. It's not something that's, um, we need to hoard it in really fast. Yeah. You know what one, one, one for me was that I used to do this and I still sometimes do this, although I'm aware of it. If I'm going to, if I have a strong craving and I know I'm going to eat something that's not going to serve me, right? I'll bring someone in with me. Because for some reason, <laughs> it's like a uh, misery loves company. It just, deal, right? it's, it's like, if I'm going to be bad, I'm going to make sure someone else is bad. Yeah. Anybody else? Anybody yeah. Else? It just, it's like, I'm not going to feel, it makes me feel better that, oh, my buddy is doing the same thing with me. And we're both going to, you know, eat this terrible <laughs> thing. That's not going to make us feel oh, very super good. super common. Yeah. So I'd be like, hey, you want to go get, you know, you want to go get some cookies? You know what I mean? Because <laughs> I want some company yeah. in order to do this. You know, uh, to what you we said, do that. We do that to each other all the time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Whenever we go on vacation. Yeah. yeah come yeah, on, yeah. man. I know, you know what's funny? So you mentioned, how you eat ice cream and stuff like that. You guys have seen, I don't know if you guys ever seen me eat a popsicle or a lollipop or whatever. Yeah, I just crunch it. I try it. not thing. to. Yeah. I just crunch it. <laughs> yeah. I look away. I see you watch. Yeah. So you know what it is? So when I get a popsicle, popsicles you're supposed to enjoy for you know however long and I eat it ar, 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 and it's gone. Yeah. And I was thinking about this the other day because I was I got a popsicle and I was sharing it with my with my young son and he's like super he's so funny he sits on my lap he's so happy because I never give him stuff like that. So he's, he's all of a sudden super obedient like I'll do whatever you want dad. <laughs> yeah. So he's you licking it and, I, and I'm biting it you know and Jessica's like it's gone in three minutes like <laughs> why do you eat it that way? I'm like you know what when I was a kid remember the ice cream man? would yeah. come by uh, and you'd hear the music mm -hmm. and, my, and I'd run to my dad, you know, give me, can I have a dollar? Please let me have a dollar. And every once in a while my dad would be like, all right, here's a dollar, but you got to come back and let me have some. So, all right. So I go get a popsicle I'd come back and my dad would always do this. He'd grab the popsicle and, crunch and it. he'd bite half of it off. <laughs> <laughs> Literally like, and he'd get half. Such a dad thing to do. Yeah. Right so I, <laughs> totally, uh, I think uh, you do too. <laughs> yeah, I do yeah. Teach you about that. taxes. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. I told, I called the dad tax. Yeah. <laughs> That's the dad tax. So it like made me do that too for yeah. some reason, which is pretty funny, but this yeah. is all awareness, right? So as you become aware, you're able to make better, logical, calculated or, or choices at the very least that serve you better rather than serve the craving. 
if you always serve your cravings, you're not serving yourself. You want to consider that. That's an important thing to understand. Yeah, you have to accept yeah. it and admit it before you even make steps to fix 100%. it. 100%. You can't fix what you're not aware of. Yeah. That's all. Here's the second thing, and this was by far my favorite strategy. And it, it, you, know, you have to do the first one that we said before you can do this one, because if you're not aware, you can't fix it. But once you're aware, I love this strategy right here, which is create space between the feeling and the impulse. Okay? I have the feeling of the craving. How do I create space between that and the impulse? One of my favorite strategies is this one right here. So I've identified there's certain foods for me which are really, really strong triggers. The, the, the number one for chips. me, potato chips, yeah. <laughs> 100%. Lay's potato chips in particular. And I'm not quite sure why. I think it's just hyper palatable for me for some it's reason. It's engineered. The commercial, the commercial yeah, got you. I'm a salt person, right? So if I have chips around me, it's like, it's a constant battle. Oh, no, don't get, oh, you know. And I end up eating a whole bag and I feel terrible and all that stuff. And, you know, physically, it just doesn't feel good. So what I've done is I've said, I'll, I'll eat them. It's not like I can't eat them. They're just not going to be in the house. Mm -hmm. If I want chips, I got to drive a mile and a half to the grocery store and I, I'll get myself a single serving of chips. Now, of all the times I have a craving for chips, how many times do you guys think I actually act on that impulse because I have to get in the car, yeah. drive over there, walk in there, grab the bag, get in line and pay for it, right? Probably one out of every 20 or 30 times. Mm -hmm. Why? Is it the hassle? Kind of, but it's not really the hassle. It's the space. Yeah. Because by the time it takes me to get my pants on, get in the car, I'm like, I don't really want it. It's not something I really want. By the time they, I they make- don't really have a drive through one yet where you don't have to put pants yeah, on. Yeah, so. or DoorDash. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I this hate DoorDash. This, work, this works for things other than, I mean, I, I shared just recently on the podcast how I do this with purchasing stuff that, yes. I, I, that I don't necessarily need. Just like you don't need the chips. I love the strategy, by but the I way. But I want it. And simply putting it in my, in my shopping cart online and waiting a night and just saying, hey, I'm not going to say I can't have it. I'm not going to say I can't have my chips. I'm gonna, but if I really want it, I got to go drive to do it. If I really want to buy that, I got to wait till tomorrow morning to go through the shopping cart. And 90% of the time, I don't do it. Delete. Yeah, you just yeah. gave me an idea. So uh, the convenience apps that we have have really made this much harder. And I predict that obesity is going to rise even faster because now I can impulsively order food. Right. Whereas before, I had to get in the car and drive somewhere. Yeah. And you just made me think of something, Adam. Mm. When you go on DoorDash, you have the option to order it right now. Or so it gets you in 30 it. minutes or schedule it. Yeah, yeah. So I think what might be a good strategy, and I've never communicated this with clients because DoorDash came out after I stopped training clients. But if I had clients today, I think what I would say is <clears throat> use DoorDash, but give yourself a three-hour window. So schedule it for three hours later. And that way you have some space between you and the impulse. And within that three-hour period, you might say, you know what? I really don't want that. Maybe mm -hmm. I don't want it. I don't know if you would count this in the same category because it's it's similar, but it's like it's also not being like distracted, right? So the the TV and the phone thing oh, is, yeah. is a big one for me with clients. Like, it does create space because what yeah, does TV do? That's right. There's no space. I'm right. distracted. Uh, so I have that impulsive reaction going on. So don't eat in front of the TV. Don't eat. But, you know, studies are clear on this, by the way. If you want to cut your calories by 10 to 15%, the most effective thing you could do is not eat in front of the TV or with your phone or any type of distraction. Just yeah. eat. It's really, it, swear to God, it's very consistent. 10 to 15% less calories. Well, I mean, thinking old school about like really designating meals yeah. throughout your day, right? Like with, that you share with other people. Like, it, so it's really important for me, especially dinner, obviously to, to connect with my kids and my wife. And this is the meal. This is the meal. You know, we're not like eating in mm. outside of that really. Uh, and just trying to like stick with like certain types of meal, like, so I'm not snacking, I guess, in a sense where it's like a constant thing that, you know, I could just interrupt that with a bad decision. Totally. Here's another one. I had a client once tell me this. Now they, they had the wrong idea behind it, but it was super effective anyway. And then I figured out later what it was and what, what he said, and he was like adamant about this. He says, when I have a craving, I got to do 10 push ups. <laughs> and I got to do 10 body weight squats. And his rationale was, I'll burn some calories and then eat the food. And I remember as a trainer being like, bro, you're burning yeah. 30 calories. Yeah, and that, the food you're about yeah. to eat is like, whatever. But it worked. And he would get leaner. And then I figured out what it was. Because he had to do 10 push-ups and 10 squats, it created space yeah. between him and the impulse. And what ended up happening was he often didn't act on the impulse because yeah. he just created space. You could do this with a walk. When you have a craving, say, okay. I'll have that food after I do a 10 minute walk. And that 10 minute period of time gives you time again to move that 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 action 
into the, the prefrontal cor cortex, into something that is much more of a conscious decision. Then when you come back from your walk, you have permission to eat it, but what you may find is you actually don't. I did, This was a huge strategy for me when I was competing. When I, you're competing, you're like hungry all the time, or you feel hungry all the time. Cravings No, are, you are hungry because yeah, you're in a deficit yeah, for 12 weeks. Yeah, kind of, so yeah. I definitely feel this way a lot. And so and I, at this time, I used to have a, a treadmill in my house. And if I had that really strong feeling, I'd get up off the couch or whatever it was I was doing, and I'd just go on the treadmill and just go for a walk for 30 minutes. And again, telling telling myself, no, it's not that I can't have that, but giving myself that space to kind of work it out. Am I really that hungry? Am I okay? I would even want to walk it too. Well, what do I really want? I could eat this. I could eat that. Before you know it, after the 30 minutes of walking on there, it's passed and I'm okay. Yep. And then now I'm even closer to the next meal time. So well, I'll just wait. It's only another half hour, hour till I eat again. So I'll just wait till my next meal. You know? I love that. Yeah, I love creating space by either uh, an obstacle or another action that you have to, you make a rule with, your, with yourself that you say, I have to do this action before I end up taking action on this uh, particular craving, like the push-ups, the sit-ups, the walk. And I picked, you know, I'm, I'm talking walk and push-ups, sit-ups and, and, you know, squats and that stuff. Just sort of healthy distractions, right? Because another distraction, you could go outside and smoke a cigarette. Don't necessarily think that's a good choice <laughs> <laughs> or trade, although people used to do that back in the day. Right. All right, so so the first two steps really center around awareness. Now we can start to talk about just strategies. And this is where people focus. What we're, what, I'm, what we're about to talk to now is where people tend to go first. But if you go here first without going through one and two, you're not going to succeed because you don't develop the relationship that you want. Instead, what you develop are relationships with the ways you lower cravings, like we're about to yeah, talk to. The impulse will still be there. The impulse, yes, that, that's still going to be there. But so if you do one and two, then you can move to three, which is eating in ways that actually lower cravings. Now we have some food strategies. One of them, and Adam, you've brought this up on recent podcasts, is eating small meals throughout the day, right? Frequent meals. So instead of having breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you, you take breakfast, you split it in half. So you go breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, dinner, snack. So now you're eating six small meals which means you're going to have less time to sit around and, and not be able to eat or whatever. I, I really like talking about this one now because we know that the six small meals thing as a metabolism booster has been debunked and yeah. there, there's no value in it for mm -hmm. that point. But it's just like the fasting thing. Like Sometimes the fitness space gets so hung up on the science of things and we forget about the behavioral side. Yep. And you know, this is just is just something that would help my clients is if they had a prepared meal already set up to where every two to three hours there it made it so much easier when those cravings would set in, like, well, I just I already have a meal. It's made for me and mm -hmm. it's in the in the refrigerator. I just gotta go reheat it for me to have it versus me going and doing some fast food or making a poor choice. It just made it easier for them to adhere to the diet because they had it scheduled out throughout the yeah, day. Because you so, have something there. Yeah, yeah. So it's not gonna burn fat faster. It's there's not a it's not a hack like that, but it is a hack to help somebody what's uh you know, live with these cravings and not feel like, oh, because I tell you, when you have a craving like that, and I, I still today struggle with this. If I have a craving hit me and I have, and it's been four or five hours since I've ate and I'm like head driving home and there's nothing no at other home. other options. Yeah. There's no other options. It's really easy to swing in totally. and get fast easy food. Easy to justify it. Right. Mm -hmm. Very easy to justify it at, at that point. And so having them broken up and prepared for the day is just a great strategy yeah. to help someone with that. Another craving killer uh, is also something that just overall increases satiety or is a very satiety promoting nutrient, which is protein. Yeah, uh, Protein will stifle your appetite big time. You talk to anybody who goes from eating, you know, average amounts of protein to eating a high amount of protein. And the complaint will be, I don't know if I can eat this much. I mean, I would have clients that would come in and we're trying to lose weight. Mm -hmm. So typically you'd have to cut their calories. If I got them to eat their protein targets, I'd say, okay. It actually happens. Oh, I'd be like, all right, Mrs. Johnson, you know, I, I need you to eat hundred grams of protein a day. Oh, I already eat a high protein diet. Well, no, no, we're going to track and that's about 35 grams or 33 grams for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Here's what it looks like with chicken. Here's what it looks like with steak or whatever. And they'd come to me and be like, I can't eat that much protein. Yeah. I start to, <laughs> it's like too much. Protein is very, very, it's very satisfying. It yeah. kills hunger. It's heavy in there. And I like that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's it's something substantial. Yeah. Uh yeah, this is a this is a great strategy. I wish honestly I I leaned in that direction earlier in my career. That would have been so helpful for me personally, um, even just uh trying to stay lean. Uh, but like for clients too, because because you, you I mean, you just get into that where you look at what 
what types of carbohydrates are out there and what uh, types of foods tend to follow as a pattern mm -hmm. after eating like a higher amount of carbohydrates. It's just human behavior. It's like it starts to kind of uh, spice up this like sort of novel interest in, in other foods that tend to lean more towards the processed side of things. It's just protein is just so satisfying and hearty. Well, yeah. mo most clients under consume it. And unless you're a fitness fanatic, which very small percentage of your clients are those people. Yeah. You underconsume protein and you overconsume carbohydrates. And it's just a, a great strategy for coaches to play that kind of like psychological game with your client of like, I'm not going to tell you you can't have any of those things that you're eating for. All I want you to do is focus on make sure you get enough protein. The calories drop. And the calories, <laughs> they yep. just naturally drop. Yeah. They're fuller. They end up replacing what was, you know, a bag of chips or a bunch of carbohydrates. Now they're eating the steak, you know, that's four or 500 calories and 40, 50 grams of protein. And they just, they end up exchanging that instead of having the 700 calories of snacks they now have this hearty meal and and then you add in the fact that now they have the building blocks to actually build muscle which then also is going to speed our metabolism oh, yeah. up yeah. so it's like essential oh, oh, win all the way around yeah. and i never had to tell this client who is here for fat loss that hey cut this out less of this less that i'm telling them hey have oh more i would this. get complaints from people who normally overeat and they would come to me and be like i can't eat this this, I, I end at the end of the night. I start to gag because I can't eat any more protein, and I used to laugh. Yeah. Here's somebody that always overeats, but now all of a sudden they can't eat enough because if you and on the extreme case, if you ever talk to anybody who's followed a carnivore diet, like I've had people, you know, DM me who followed carnivore. I know you did for a second, uh, uh -huh. Justin, as more of an elimination diet. But the complaint was always, I can't get enough calories. I it's just don't want to eat anymore. Difficult, man. Yeah, it's really difficult yeah. to to eat that much meat to stack up to the amount of calories you could easily do with carbohydrates. Yeah, it's funny. A another strategy too is to uh, use these low calorie the foods to keep like your mouth busy. You you're notorious for this, Sal. You oh, almost yeah. always are carrying your little thing of rice cakes with your supplement you got a bag. real busy yeah. mouth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Thanks, Justin. But you know, <laughs> eating something that what are those things? 30, 40 calories Nothing. or something like that. They're hardly anything. You know, what my favorite is pickles. Oh, pickles. Pickles are the best. They're salty. The salt, for some reason, actually, I know why. Uh, salt, you'll you'll get cravings if your salt is low as well. But the the saltiness, they're crispy, um, and they and of course, it's a cucumber, right? It's just a yep. it's a pickled cucumber. So I'm getting vegetables. How many calories are in one pickle? Like five? Not much. Eat a whole jar of them, and you've got you know what are you fifty calories? I mean, it's one of my favorite foods to eat if I feel a strong craving and I'm having a tough time with it or dealing with it. I'll just eat like two or three pickles. It's not a big deal. Carrots. Yeah. Carrots is not how Doug does that all the time, right? He'll eat, he snacks on carrots. That's another good one. So there's definitely foods that you can you can snack on. Olives is another one. Uh, now, olive oil is high in calories. Olives are not. You can eat a jar of olives and your calories are still pretty damn low. Doesn't yeah. make that big of a difference, yeah. you know? All right, the next one, another trainer trick that we used to play on our clients is uh, to have them drink a lot of water. Yeah, yep. You get somebody to aim for a gallon of water a day and they tend to eat less calories. It's really funny. But it's because being hydrated often does blunt the craving signals that we tend to get um, when we're feeling anxious or sad or whatever. In fact, I used to tell clients as, a, as an awareness strategy, when you feel a craving, drink two glasses of water and wait five minutes. Yeah. And that would work like clockwork. And about 50% of the people that would that would try well, it. Well, I, I remember when I figured this out, I had read something, and I, maybe you remember, Sal, like it talks about how much, how, how many people uh, over consume calories through liquid drinks. Oh, it's a lot. Yeah, it's a high percentage. And I remember seeing that going like, oh my God, if I could just get, if this is this percentage of people that are overweight or obese, or it's because they're drinking so many calories, if I could just find a way to get my clients to stop drinking their calories, we'd have a huge win. And again, going back to the same philosophy of not telling a client you can't have, the strategy would be drink more water. Yeah, if I yeah. kept them, to drink a gallon Add of water this. is hard. It's yeah. really, it's actually yeah, a lot. It, people don't think so. Try it. Yeah, it's it's hard to like consist. And, and everybody go, oh, I drink plenty of water. I drink, well, yeah, have you ever measured it and actually seen? Like no. try and measure it and see if you actually hit a, a gallon. A half a gallon is hard for people. Yes. So giving someone a goal like three quarters of a gallon to a gallon of water in a day is is challenging for most people. And all it does is it keeps them busy drinking that. They don't ever have the time where they're craving a soda or juice because they're constantly having to drink the water. Now, along with that, add a little bit of a little bit of sea salt to your water. When you're drinking that much water, um, you are going to be expelling more sodium. Being low on sodium will send a hunger signal to your body or a craving signal to the body. This is especially true for people who eat a low uh, carbohydrate diet. We work with a company called LMNT, 
and they make an electrolyte powder that's high in sodium. You can put that in your water. There's no calories. Or you could take literally pink Himalayan salt and a pinch in a bottle. You wouldn't even taste it, but it's enough to give you the, the sodium to balance out all that extra Especially water. if you're working out and still getting after Definitely it. Definitely I mean, if you're working it's, out. It's so amazing when uh, you add in just a pinch of salt and what that does for your performance um, you know, in training or running or anything else. Yeah, one of my have. favorites are um, uh, carbonated water. Carbonated water, this is anecdote, so I have no studies to support this, but carbonated water when it comes to cravings is like amazing in comparison well, to regular water. Especially if you're trying to reduce the amount of alcohol. Uh, uh, in terms of like carb carb carbonated water and lime for me was always a, a fantastic uh, replacement. Who was it that turned us on to that? Somebody did that. It, it, I don't remember. Yeah, it was definitely like a game changer for me just because I... It, it was the mouthfeel, it yeah. was the, so the I, smells, all that kind of stuff, and it did yep. help. So I've done that, and then what I'll do is I'll put uh, I'll put lime, carbonated water, a and then salt. salt. Yeah, yeah. salt. Yeah. It's like and you're salt. having like a Corona. Yes. <laughs> yeah. like a, like so a I've, poor, I've done that. man's Corona. I've done that for a long <laughs> time, and it does. It's it just it's just more satiating, I guess, or yeah. satisfying than just a regular glass of water. Um, so that's just another, that's a hack, that's just a trick. Another, yeah. Again, I don't have any studies to support that, but that's just a lot of anecdote. All right, the last step, we've already mentioned quite a few times, which is the practice of fasting. By the way, the practice of fasting doesn't just apply to food. You can fast from anything that you have an impulse with. So if you impulsively go on social media- uh, Or buy things. You can fast. If you impulsively <laughs> yes. buy things, yeah. you can fast from it, right? You, if you, Anything that you do impulsively, if you fast from it, what you end up doing is you end up dealing with the feelings and then you automatically realize you can deal without, you, you don't need it and you start to develop a new relationship. And it's almost, it's not quite, almost like hitting the reset button. You hit the reset button, you start over and now you're comfortable. I went 24 or 48 hours without whatever this thing is that I'm fasting from. In this case, it may be food. Uh, in which case, uh, now I feel like I have a better handle on it. Well, really what you're doing is you're slowing down the speed. Because uh, most of the time you get into trouble and like the cravings, it's all about speed and yep. how quickly yep. I can get it and, and, and you know, feed that, that trigger, that impulse. Uh, and to be able to create that space, do all the steps we mentioned in between is really about like slowing things down, being able to, uh, you know, really be aware of what's happening, be present. Thank you. There's two. That's so, okay. That what Justin just said right now is the most important part of this. Now, there's two things that I want to say. One if you have had eating disorders in the past, fasting is not a good option because it can push you back in that direction. Okay, so we're not talking to you if you've dealt with that before. Two, what, what Justin just said about being present is so important because if you fast and the way you deal with your feelings is distracting yourself while you're fasting, what you'll have is a, uh, a symptom eruption at the end of your fast. And you'll see this sometimes. Someone will fast for 48 hours. Right. And they binge. And then they'll binge yeah, afterwards. Super consuming. Yes, because they, they white-knuckled it the whole time and distracted themselves. Mm -hmm. When you fast, you don't just not eat. You also sit with and allow yourself to feel what you're feeling. And you become aware of the feelings. If you distract yourself when you fast the rebound is going to be nasty. You're going to go back to eating and you have solved nothing. And if anything, you've given yourself permission now to binge. And then you encourage this, this not very good relationship with food that you end up training. I, I also well. like, and I know you kind of said it, right? The, this kind of reset feeling that I get where I become like ultra sensitive to foods that oh. don't agree with me. Oh. So if you make the mistake of uh, fasting mm -hmm. and then going and eating something that is a food that doesn't really agree with you very well. Diarrhea. Oh my God. Yeah. It just destroys you after that. So that's what's kind of cool is like after you do it, you really are craving these like you want vegetables and whole foods and you want like a light meal yep. because eating something really heavy after that, especially if it's something that doesn't agree with you. Oh man, you will feel that well, and notice it right physiologically away. Physiologically too, here's what happens as well is that the, the the receptors that are responsible for the sensations, the pleasurable feelings that we get from food, when we are constantly feeding ourselves, Oversaturated. they down they down regulate. Yeah. Okay, when you fast, these receptors that are responsible for there's a lot of them, right? There's you have your dopamine and your serotonin, and there's other things, other things that happen in the body. When you fast, those receptors upregulate, and then here's the interesting thing: you'll let's say you're a candy addict, so you just love sugar, love candy. You fast for however long, 24, 48, 72 hours, whatever. You come out of the fast, you don't eat candy, go eat a piece of fruit. The fruit will taste sweeter yeah. than you could remember. Yeah. It'll be sweeter than what it, what, it, what you experienced before because you've up, it's, it's almost like, it's like this. It's like not having sex with your wife for three weeks and then you have sex with her. 
It's like, oh my god! Well, it's like, it's like because, having it's like having a sponge that's full of water when you're oversaturated and you're just running water and it's just going right through yeah. versus having it and then wringing it all out and then running it underwater. How it just sucks up and absorbs oh, yeah. everything. I mean, the food food tastes the experience with food after a fast is quite remarkable. And I remember thinking that like I ate foods that were yeah you know, that were eat that were healthy, but then I ate them after a fast. I'm like, oh my gosh, this asparagus is so delicious, which I've never said before, right? Yeah. So it's a very interesting physiological phenomenon that happens as well. But but while you're fasting, you have to be aware. Otherwise, you'll do the That's the, a, the What you just said right now is actually a great strategy to get people to like vegetables or like something that's healthy for introduce them. Introduce them after the fast. Yeah, introduce them after. I should tell you what, when you're a uh, zero, was it Chris Rock who did the stand-up where he talked about a, uh, the saltine cracker he's he's referring to not having sex like you said oh, for yeah. all time and then you give it to him and they're oh my god this is the best damn cracker I've yeah, ever yeah, had in my yeah. life if you're starving and somebody throw you a cracker you're gonna be like this god damn that's the best cracker I've ate in my life if you know it's a saltine cracker it's because he was starving so yeah. it's the same concept like you fast for a, an extended period of time like that introduce a food that maybe oh you didn't think that you liked very much but mm -hmm. you're so hungry watch how good those carrots or the, or the, the vegetable taste because you haven't had anything excellent look if you like our information head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides we have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal you can also find all of us on social media so Justin is on Instagram at MindPumpJustin. Adam is on Instagram at MindPumpAdam. And you can find me on Twitter at MindPumpSal.